the meniscus injuries are one of the commonest uh, knee joint injuries uh, we get to see in our daily routine uh, outpatient uh, departments and these injuries are quite uh, painful and uh, sometimes challenging to treat uh, so the knee in the knee the menisci are very important structures and they not only gives uh, the compressive uh, it not does it not only prevent the compressive stresses and protect the cartilage but it also gives stability and uh, nutrition to the knee joint and it usually get uh, injured in the rotational injuries and sometime in the elderly people uh, the meniscal tears can be degenerative so as you can see the structure of the meniscus is like a crescent recording stop recording and, uh, in progress is uh, it covers more area of the tbl plateau on the lateral side as compared to the uh, medial meniscus and there is a circumferential orientation of the fibers which provide the hoop stresses and uh, it uh, it not only gives stability it uh, act as a counterprotective structure there are the anterior and the posterior root attachments which prevents the extrusion of the uh, meniscus the anterior uh, root of the lateral meniscus is uh, very close to the anterior part of the anter uh, uh, anterior cruciate ligament and sometimes it get uh, injured uh, uh, in ACL injuries, specifically in ACL avulsions. Uh, while in elderly people, the medial meniscus posterior root is get uh, torn most commonly. As I, as I just explained, the lateral meniscus covers more area of the uh, condylar surface, almost 84%. And it is 12 millimeter wide and about 3 to 5 millimeter thick. As compared to that, the uh, medial meniscus is longer, but it covers quite uh, lesser uh, area, about 64%, uh, percent, and it is about 10 millimeter wide. So vascularity, as we all know, the only the peripheral part of the meniscus is vascular, and the inner part, which is within the joint, almost inner one third, one half, uh, uh, is uh, a vascular. But at the birth, almost 50% of the meniscus is completely vascularized from the genicular arteries and as the age grows it gradually reduced to just 10 to 25 percent so according to the vascularity the meniscus is divided into the three different areas uh, red 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 white and white white and this white white the tear in the white white area are very less chances of healing so in these area the tear we usually do a partial meniscectomy and balancing uh, as I just explained, the collagen orientation is mostly circumferential and there are a few uh, radial fibers. The superficial layers uh, are uh, covered with the interconnection of the circumferential and the radial fibers. And on the periphery, the, it is attached to the capsule from which it derives nutrition uh, for the chondrocytes through the genicular vessels. The uh, load sharing, the increase is contact area between the femur and TBI because of its conforming and crescent type shape. It decreases the contract stress on the articular cartilage. Uh, it increases the congruity, provides uh, excellent stability and aids in lubrication uh, through its attachment to the capsule and the synovium. Uh, in extension, about 50% of the load is absorbed by the meniscus, but as the flexion goes on increasing at about 90 degree flexion, the 90% of the load is shared by the menisci. And in this position, there are high chances of uh, meniscal injuries if there is a rotational uh, trauma. Beyond 90 degree, the forces are predominantly on the posterior horn of the meniscus. So that's why after the meniscus repair, we don't allow the flexion beyond 90 degree for about two to three months. Meniscus excursion with the knee flexion and the lateral meniscus has more excursion because lateral meniscus is very loosely attached to the uh, lateral coronary uh, ligaments and there is a popliteal hiatus also uh, on the lateral side. So the lateral meniscus has more um, excursion as compared to the medial meniscus because the medial meniscus is attached tightly to the capsule as well as with the deep, deep uh, MCL and the coronary ligament. 
so whenever there is a meniscus tear we always try to preserve the meniscus and this is has been the motto since last few years because the complete removal of the meniscus increases the contact stresses uh, on the cartilages on the ligament by three fold just removing the inner one third that is the 10% of the uh, on uh, 30% of the meniscus can uh, increase the uh, contact stress by about 65% so the increase in the loss of the tissue increases the contact stress causes more damage to the cartilage and this can goes on to developing uh, knee joint arthritis uh, generally the patient gives history of the twisting injury in the younger population while playing or fall from the two wheeler or uh, skipping a step sometime in the elderly patient just squatting or missing the step can cause uh, uh, root tears uh, with uh, just uh, popping sensation the acute tears are usually in there is an inside a swelling effusion uh, there will be a pain along the joint line and if the meniscus is completely torn like a bucket handle tear or a, a flap uh, like a parrot beak tear there can be a mechanical complaints like locking and uh, clicking so this has been covered just now so initially there what uh, there are the clinical tests there will be effusion most sensitive and specific test will be a joint line tenderness there will be a joint line tenderness posterior medially for the medial meniscus and about uh, in the middle part of the lateral meniscus if the lateral meniscus is torn the macmurray test and the aples grinding test are the another two tests for uh, uh, diagnosing the meniscal tear in the Uh, this has been just explained uh, on the live demonstration and if there is a bucket handle tear the knee get lock in 5 to 10 degree of the flexion and if uh, the some rotational movements are done the there will be click and the meniscus will go back and then on again the patient can extend his knee so plain uh, the investigation the x ray will show only oh changes we cannot uh, see any Uh, meniscus pathology on the uh, x-ray mri is the gold standard where you can see the uh, all type of meniscal tear whether it is horizontal tear cleavage tear or radial tear that that can be diagnosed by mri so what are the longitudinal vertical tear the longitudinal vertical tears runs along the course of the meniscus and these are typically traumatic and seen in the younger population and most commonly they are associated with the acl injuries the 90% of the uh, longitudinal vertical tears are in the medial meniscus while 83% are in the lateral meniscus and most of the time they are associated with the uh, acl tears so here you can see the example of the longitudinal vertical tear here you can see in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus in this patient the acl was also torn you have to probe it then you have to use a spinal needle to actually see it because sometimes we can miss this tear and it can goes on to become a bucket handle tear so so now we are looking from the different portal after preparing the tear this is the zone specific cannula so we pass the cannula and through over it a needle and a zero number fiber wire take another bite so this is the vert vertical repair and this is how it get repaired and we will pass another one or two stitches and it will be over and if this longitudinal vertical tear goes on progressing and the patient neglect it it will it becomes a bucket handle uh, tear which gets locked into the intercondylar notch and the patient will have the locking symptoms here you can see a classical bucket handle tear the meniscus has been locked in the uh, intercondylar notch so to try to reduce it see for the reducibility check for the double sometime there can be a double bucket handle tear or uh, in between uh, there can be a flap tear so you have to inspect the knee 
uh, meniscus after reducing it then prepare it and then start repairing it initially with inside out using a zone specific cannulas and on on the anterior part uh, outside in technique and the posterior most part you have to use all inside uh, suture repair technique this is all uh, inside out uh, repair technique using zone specific meniscus cannulas and needles you have to take three bites on the top and two to three bites on the under surface of the meniscus so that the meniscus will not get inverted after the repair here you can see the, com the completion of the repair these are outside in inside out and these are all inside so the horizontal cleavage tear the horizontal cleavage tears usually you get it in the older elderly people which are having the medial joint arthritis and uh, these are very uh, painful and sometimes causes locking catching symptoms and you have to repair it because if you ignore these horizontal cleavage tears just debride it and doesn't close the mouth the synovial fluid keeps on going inside the tear and the it will ir cause the irritating pain to the patient and in future it can develop the meniscal cyst also so you have to close the mouth using the specific instrument like a knee scorpion or uh, the uh, flexible uh, cannulas the radial tears the radial tears are usually seen in the acute uh, injuries and those involve the free age of the uh, meniscus and extend uh, Uh, medially or laterally depending on the whether it is in the lateral or the medial meniscus and radial tears are uh, just like a complete meniscectomy because it completely uh, resists uh, decreases the capacity of the meniscus to resist the hoop stresses deeper the tear the more drastic the biomechanical con uh, consequences so we always have to repair the uh, radial tear if you try to excise the radial tear then you will lose a significant amount of the meniscus and that will be uh, very detrimental to the joint health and the patient can develop osteoarthritis very rapidly so radial tear you have always have to be repaired so you can see these are the radial tears different type of radial tear you freshen the edges use the knee scorpion to take the bite you can uh, use a simple inside out uh, needles also uh, and uh, use a different uh, type of sutures like uh, you can use pds number 1 sometime you can use a fiber wires or even if not available you can if uh, use a 20 ethy bond also but using a different type of the technique you have to repair the radial tears parrot beak tears is it is also called as a vertical flap tear and it start as a radial tear and if is ignored it extend longitudinally and the, and the superficial flap get separate like a uh, parrot beak and it can it is a, it is having a tendency to propagate so after arthroscopic you have to uh, remove the loose flap and repair the remaining part of the meniscus uh, root tears as i always as just now i told you that the root has a four attachment anteriorly and posteriorly and the most common root tears are degenerative root tears in the posterior horn of the posterior root of the medial meniscus and if it is ignored it just like a complete meniscectomy the meniscus will get extruded from the uh, joint and that will further increases the contact stresses on the cartilage and rapidly the patient develop the medial joint osteoarthritis so whenever you diagnose the root tear clinically on mri you always try to repair it and not only repair it try to bring the meniscus in the joint by debriding on the along the peripheral part of the meniscus to uh, loosen the from it from the coronary ligament bring it into the uh, knee joint take a uh, holding sutures and then uh, repair the uh, meniscus so that the meniscus will stay within the joint and it will act as a counter protective structure so 
this is a older video sorry for the poor quality you can see there is a complete uh, avulsion of the uh, posterior root of the medial meniscus you take the bite with the knee scorpion this is the locking loop stitch which is uh, which is having excellent uh, uh, holding strength if another uh, bite bit more medially same locking loop type stitch again then make a tunnel at the root attachment with a 4.5 cannulated reamer pass the suture and then tie it in over the tibia with the help of a button you can see the root has been completely stabilized meniscectomy sometimes you cannot repair all the meniscal tear sometimes there are complex tears there are loose flaps degenerative tears and tears in the only within the white white area so you cannot always repair the meniscus so just debriding the uh, peripheral part and giving the meniscus its proper shape can also work in many patients so the goal is to debride the tear leave the very stable rim and preservation is ideal you have to preserve the meniscus as much as possible because the lateral meniscus is a very important structure you always have to try to save the lateral meniscus if the lateral meniscus is excised in more amount there is a rapid development of the posterior artery here you can see it's a extremely complex tear flap tear the meniscus is badly torn you cannot repair such meniscus you have to remove these loose flaps and you can see how much the how much cartilage damage it has caused because of the loss of the meniscus so you have to just excise the you know, peripheral part give it a proper shape and do some micro fracture in the uh, intercondylar area so that the remaining meniscus will get some nutrition and hey so when meniscus repair the meniscus repair works in the younger patient and it works if the meniscal tear is in the red white or red red zone it, that means it must be a right kind of a tear after repair go for a slower, slower rehabilitation and if sometimes in a very aggressive person if a, um, in a in a means professional player they are very in a very hurry to return to the sports so during that they can re tear their Uh, meniscus so you have to explain everything to the patient before going for the meniscus repair in such patient contraindications are advanced oa complex tear poor poor quality of the tissue acl deficiency if you want to sir hurry up uh, your timing is yes, sir. Too short. Sir, one minute so if uh, there is a meniscal tear in the acl deficiency you have to first reconstruct the acl and then do meniscus repair you can just do can't just do a meniscus repair and leave the acl alone because there will be a retear of the meniscus so this i have already explained inside out using a zone specific cannulas outside in repair you can use a simple spinal needle from outside all inside there are various uh, uh, devices uh, generation 4 devices from different companies like smith nephew arthrex so you can use this they gives a excellent stability and the mechanical studies have shown that all inside uh, repair is as good as outside in or inside out suture techniques post operatively if you are repairing the patient patient has to be on the crutches for 4 to 6 weeks non weight bearing after 6 weeks partial weight bearing for another 4 uh, to 6 weeks and full weight bearing only after 2 to 3 months so the success rate of all techniques are about 70 to 95% in case of the repair the second look scope shows lower success rate ligament laxity decreases the success rate so you have to reconstruct the ligament then only you can go for the meniscus repair that is why there is more than 90% success rate reported in conjunction with the acl reconstruction the complication there can be injuries to the nerve so whenever you are doing a inside out technique you take a uh, outside incision previously protect it with a spoon 
and then pass the zone specific cannula so that you should not injure the sural nerve or on, on the lateral side the common peroneal nerve thank you very much